Okay, let's continue with uh, Master Shenhua's Chan instructional talks. In the past, before Guo Li and Guo Shan got married, I told them they are not allowed to argue. I reckon they still argue, but very little. They may secretly quarrel with a few words, but it is not very serious. Do we have inter-temple? I can't see anything. Do we have inter-temple? I can't see anything at all on my screen. Ah, there you go. Thank you. Okay. Besides, Guo Shan is also very patient. Guo Li talks like a woman and doesn't have too much of hot temper. So, are they still together? Later, Guo Shan and Guo Li moved to San Diego. Now I'm not sure if they're still the same as before. For example, In general, husband and wife must be in harmony, must not argue. Therefore, before getting married, 
It's more of a reason you should not argue. You should not often feel it is fun to give each other trouble. That is wrong. You should respect each other. You respect me, I respect you. Don't fight or lose your temper over trivial matters or things said. You shouldn't lose your temper. Before getting married, you shouldn't lose your temper. After you are married, you shouldn't lose your temper, even more so. When your family is in harmonious, the country will be good. When the country is good, the world will be good. If your family is not in harmony, the country won't be good. The country won't be good. Such being the case, when the country is not good, the world war will start a war against each other. At the family level, there are minor wars. At the country level, there are medium wars. At the worldly level, there are major wars. First, we must quell the minor wars, then the medium wars will not happen, then the major wars naturally will not occur. You ought to know the moment of the couple is arguing. It's like having a violent wind and heavy storm between heaven and earth. Once a person loses his temper, it's like a violent wind and heavy storm. It's okay to rain, but don't thunderstorm. Is it Is it Okay. The 
this violent wind and heavy storm will blow down trees, ruin houses, and kill people. So it's a massive loss. Argue like a drizzle. Light rain is okay. Don't engage in big quarrels. Minor ones are okay. Keep it to a whisper so master can't hear it. If you let master hear it, master will also be afflicted. So when you argue at home, you are not allowed to do so loudly. <laughs> if you argue loudly, then I can hear you because I have a police scanner here. As soon as you your transmission starts, I will receive the signal and see who is arguing. So regardless who it is, you shouldn't argue. You should not lose your temper. Whoever loses his or her temper needs to kneel here, kneel in front of the Buddha for three days. I don't care who you are, you will be punished if you don't listen. That's committing a crime on top of a crime. So I hope you all strive to be a good disciple. Don't give master too much trouble. We shall all be good kids. Don't be mischievous, child. Don't be a naughty child. Today, I'm so pissed off to the point that I have nothing to say. I can't stop. That's far enough. I'm trying to see where he's going. I don't understand why he's talking like this, to be honest with you. <laughs> so Chinese. Anyone agrees with him? I disagree. Yes, Chinese person. Thank you. I don't know, I feel it's kind of cute. He's like a complaining grandfather. Yeah, I know, he's so old fashioned, you know, <laughs> like, a, does he know we are in the 21st century? 
at least it's the 20th century. Like complain, but just kind of like lovely the way he's talking. It's like yeah, very grandpa very is talking, right? So listen and, and just no, obey. It's just like a very caring, very lovely, like this, this that. I don't know. If but do <laughs> they really listen? Seriously? <laughs> yeah, that's why it's like a grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> they talk. <laughs> Where were we? Sorry, which uh, which slide number did we start? I should remember these things. So sorry. Slide 87. 87, we went that far? Yeah. Good Lord. Whoa, he went on and on. I'm trying to understand where he's going. And um, I sort of, uh, okay, so that's, uh, okay, feel free to comment, okay, we are all learning together. Uh, I don't remember this section when I, I think I listened to this once on my uh, portable cassette recorder a long, long time ago, and it was very, very unclear, so I, and I couldn't understand a lot of uh, his Chinese anyway. Mm. So it's, uh, it's uh, nice to be able to understand more nowadays and thanks to your transcription. Okay, so, uh, uh, so he says that uh, a couple go, go, li, uh, go Li and Go Shan got married and are not allowed to argue. So he said, don't argue. Maybe they argue a lot, we don't know, okay? And they say argue a little, but secretly quarrel a few words, so it's not serious, that's fine. So apparently they have, uh, they argue, argue quite a bit, that's why he had to calm them down, okay? This is reasonable, okay? And, uh, pr uh, and the Goshan is very patient, so the lady is patient, Go, Go Li is a man, talks like a woman. Oh, by the way, uh, I was at DTT today, and uh, I noticed that Loi was there with uh, with uh, um, Tuan, and they're still working. Tuan is really a slave driver. <laughs> Don't let him talk you into doing something for the temple, okay? Uh, Tuan, take it easy. They'll run away from us. This is our schedule, by the way. There's no, there's no timetable. If there's work to be done, we do it until we drop that. Hmm. And Master G used to do that here and go forth. That's how we got here. A lot of people, Tuan, Ju, Yung, and you know, Yung Ah, and, and everyone uh, came and, and helped. So, but uh, take it easy. Oh, jeez. See, they're not even the screen right now. They're installing uh, some new TV things. Okay. Uh, I feel guilty. Okay, anyway, moving on. Uh, the man is a, is a very gentle, not like a woman, talk like a woman, doesn't have a temper, and they moved to San Diego and so forth. And so, so that's just end the story between the couple. So apparently, I guess they argue a lot. So master had to intervene and say, hey, don't argue. Okay, period. You don't need a reason. Okay, the point there, the lesson I'm learning from there is that uh, you should do what the master said, says because he says it for a reason. Master Shino has great wisdom. So it's very important for us that when you learn from a good no advisor, a great teacher like a teacher like Master Shino, uh, you have to obey the instructions. Actually, you should feel grateful that he told you what to do. Okay, uh, don't don't miss that. Uh, so. And then now, 91 in general, husband and wife must be in harmony, must not argue. Uh, how is it possible the husband and wife don't argue? I'm preparing pay for, for eventual marriage here. 
Huh? Yeah. How do you not, not argue? See, you argue with your husband every day, right? Small. We have a lot of time to talk, so we don't argue. <laughs> a lot of time to what? We don't have a lot of time to talk, so we don't argue. Ah, I see. Ah, so, so you go home and you take care of the kids, yes? You work? We work. That's what everyone does here. You go home and you work. You continue your work. Yeah, we do uh, family work and then we do work. Yeah, we take care of the kids and then we work. Each do our own stuff. So, we're busy. Oh, that's yeah. one way to be harmonious. Hey, T, how, uh, how, are you, how are you family harmonious? <laughs> <laughs> so who wins when there's a disagreement? Once a year? Yeah. Over what? Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah. You know, get a few more because there's too many people now. Before we expect like maybe five people max. <laughs> Xianjie, you there? Order, order a few more. Okay. Four more. Uh, four more, whatever you like to order. <laughs> and please don't disappoint me. He goes crazy. Every month I look at his Testing. credit card bills. And so, Oh, you are more expensive than a wife. <laughs> so what do you argue over once a year? Let's hear it. We're curious I now. don't remember. Wouldn't What's you like to argue? know? Yeah, like normally we just talk things through, and just after that I just forget. And, uh, but so it's nothing that serious. Yeah, but over the kids, I'm sure. No, not over the kids. No. Not over the kids. Mostly, probably me. <laughs> mm. Mm. Okay. Mm. All right. So husband and I must be in harmony. Must and must not argue. Anyone else has any idea about here? Is, that, is it possible you can don't argue? See young people, do you argue or not? Huh? Young people, does it make sense to you? Must be in harmony. We know that some people argue with their wives. <laughs> Most people argue with their wives and their spouses. Yes? Must not argue. And before getting married, it's more reason you should not argue after, and you should not often feel it's finding in trouble, that is wrong. Uh, okay? Anyone? My problem with this is that it doesn't quite work with the Westerners, I mean, especially for us. There must be a reason for us to do things. Because most, most of us, to tell us to do something without reason, we don't take it seriously, right? Are you paying attention, Xin Xin? People will argue. That's what they do. That's what he's talking about. So the question is, how do you get them not to argue? That's called leadership. Okay? Uh, so, and this is what in general, I find uh, Master Xinhua is training his people lacking 
in leadership training because they have a lot of people, they have a lot of assets, they have a lot of responsibilities, they have a lot of disciples. Uh, Sangha members, is, uh, members are huge, there are a lot. And, uh, but the, I don't see any uh, leadership skills at all. I was there the whole time. Uh, the people who exhibit his leadership skills are impure. The one who appear have no, no leadership skills. How are, they gonna, how are you going to teach impure people? The impure people are going to, but you, why are you, <laughs> why are you on top of me again? <laughs> okay, why must I listen to you? Okay, uh, so, uh, so how do you get people not to argue? To me, it's not a matter of not Arguing. If I were to teach a couple, don't argue. Okay. I doubt that you would uh, you would listen politely and respectfully, but then you go home and argue, because if you like to argue, you're going to argue, right? My point here is that you need to give them a reason to do this. He has virtues. We don't. When Master Xinhua told his disciples, don't argue, I believe that they would not argue. They were subdued because of his, his virtuous uh, conduct, uh, his way virtues. But, uh, but uh, for us, how do we get people not to argue? Think about it, each, each case is different. Okay. Uh. Go ahead, Wei Mount. Master just really quick uh, to say on wisdom. So if they were at a certain level of wisdom, they wouldn't be afflicted. Therefore, they wouldn't argue. Okay. Okay. So what you're telling me indirectly is that if they have wisdom, they will not argue. In order to have wisdom, they need to uh, train, they need to meditate, they need to cultivate. The cultivation in our environment is open, is to build your, your concentration power, which then will help unfold your inherent wisdom. Okay? That's, uh, okay, that's correct. Okay? But that's how we do it. Cultivate. Yes, Green. Thank you, Sufu. Um, I can't speak for other, but for my family, uh, whenever a thing that is conflict occur, what I normally do is we, I, I always put myself in his perspective, and then I say, oh, it's normal for the way he think that way because that's 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 how he is, and then um, there's a. a problem with me is when conflict occur, uh, something about me, I just clam, I, I can't talk. And then two, three days later, or maybe after 24 hours, that's when we sit and then we lay everything transparent on the table. And then we listen to each other perspective and then explain why we act the way we act or how, why we think the way we think. And then from there we get understanding. That's why we don't argue in our family. Mm. Hmm. No, well, sound like you like each other too much to argue. Not a typical couple. Yes, Green. Uh, from kind of more like a workplace perspective, or people come to a temple to work. Um, I think uh, one thing is to remind them that. What, why they're doing this? Like, what is the, their original goal? Aha, like? aha. Now, someone has leadership skills here, okay? Give them a common purpose that they both subscribe to. Hmm? Family, let's take care of the kids. Hmm? Let's take care of the parents. Let's take care of whatever, together, yes? And that's when you have a common goal together, you, you, you will 
overlook the, uh, the minor differences, right? Because it's more important thing to worry about than your own afflictions. Yes? Okay. Uh, conk. Hello. So about the uh, um, I have a question now that uh, some people think I'm wrong, but uh, if we show them logical beneficial from not arguing, and if they uh, are convinced with that, uh, then that's why many people try not to argue because um, it's more beneficial not to argue. <laughs> Uh, yes, you put in words in my mouth. I never uh, show people how to not argue. I love love people to argue. To me, I'm an, I, I, I love impulses. I don't subscribe to suppression. I don't subscribe to repression that you Asians love to do. Your Confucian ways uh, really, uh, I find it to be uh, unhealthy mentally. Okay, so I, I think it's perfectly okay to argue personally. Just some, someone has to make sure it does not get out of control. It's very healthy to argue and, and, uh, and disagree to me. But don't uh, don't uh, don't let it uh, um, become become uh, um, uh, the, don't let it create a chasm between you. Okay. Mm. You too. Yes. Yes, let me stop there. Uh, exactly. To me, argue, argument is healthy because you need to know what is afflicting the other person and how deep a level of affliction it is. So to me, it's very healthy to argue. There's no need to repress it and suppress the argument and because suppression causes resentment the repression is stupidity to me. Why would you want to repress anyone? Let the kids play. Look at the kids. You know, they walk in here when they, the kids when they first came here, they go, oh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure about this. But now look at them, they, they come here, it's, just, it's their home, they play around and they, you know, they connect with each other and they care for each other. That's how it should be, okay? They should be themselves. I don't believe in repressing them. Like, I don't want to go to the temple. I don't want to see the kids. Uh, the adults look like, shh, you're creating offenses against the chip of jewel. Let them. Yes, they're creating offenses. When a chip of jewel should be good enough and generous enough and big enough to forgive them. Isn't that what you were supposed to do? See, my problem, repression is never a healthy thing to me, not for the kids. Because it makes, it, it creates a wall between us and the kids. It's supposed to help you bond with your family, not create more walls when you come here. Okay, uh, same thing. You can argue as long as you are able to finally uh, resolve the wall, break down the wall between you two that created that affliction. To me, argument, to argue has a purpose of breaking down walls. Whereas if you suppress it, if you repress it, it's still there. 
And this is, I feel, this is a weakness of the confusion approach. Yes, your family is more harmonious and you stay together longer, but you still are just as, as stupid when you die. Okay. Continue, Peter. No, no, no. <laughs> you cannot put words in my mouth. I never said she's bipolar. How dare you? <laughs> Next. This guy is something else. You have to watch for this guy. Okay, everyone is Diego, okay? He will put words in your mouth. <laughs> Three. Next. He's Colombian. <laughs> Too macho. Yes, three. This teacher has a lot of work. This person must not be married. Okay, next. Uh, final current easy comment from Daniel Carrasco. Who is that? Oh, Catholic. Another Catholic. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we have lots of Daniels now. Daniel Zbigniewski, Daniel of DTT, yeah. From Daniel Carrasco, Catholic Daniel. Daniel of Northern California, uh, and so forth, yes. When there is tennis sites at my workplace, I would always say, I have bigger fish to fry. Yeah, you, you lack compassion. Okay, yeah. Uh, all right, anyone else? Very good. Why well, people are, li are listening, aren't they? Same people, though. <laughs> we should respect each other. Of course we do. Okay, you respect me, I respect you. Yeah, but it has come from the heart. It's not, it is, you, I respect you because I really respect you, not because she tells me to respect you. That's my problem. Hmm? Yes, we're supposed to respect each other. So the instruction is correct. Okay, it should be find a way to respect each other, not force people, forcing people to respect each other. Again, he's telling us to respect each other. Yeah, but we're not children. Okay, uh, you teach your children, yes, respect each other, fine, because you explain to them it's a waste of time. Okay, fine. But for adults, it's feels, doesn't feel right, okay? Don't fight and lose your temper over trivial matter of things said, okay? Yeah. But I'm bipolar, what are you gonna do about it? You shouldn't lose your temper. Yeah, I like to get angry. Before getting married, you shouldn't lose your temper. That's easy. But after you get married, it's much easier to lose your temper, okay? Because she spends so much money. You know, you know, commonplace where we argue over money. That's what I was waiting for with these people. It's like weird. <laughs> right. Your family is harmonious. The country will be good. When the country is good, the world will be good. Okay, of course. But harmonious, harmony can be arrived at through argument, through quarreling, through disagreement. It's a much stronger type of harmony I submit to you. The harmony that's artificial 
Well, you, you agree with each other, like because you Korean, you Japanese, that's your culture, okay? Uh, the Vietnamese, we're, they're, they're different. They like to argue, right? The Vietnamese, they, they chow chia. Except for this Vietnamese couple. No? Yeah, we like to argue. I see now blood. North and South Vietnam, you know, <laughs> Central Vietnam versus Southern region, you know, well, we argue. It's like, it's so can be good and 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 uh, and uh, so so my counter argument is that I agree with harmony is good, but there are better way to create harmony. Okay, uh, will be good. Okay. Uh, Yeah, you know, listen, for example, right now, okay, that's, there's no harmony in the world, right? Putin is attacking Ukraine. That's why he cannot attack us. <laughs> Isn't that great that they have an argument? Now we are at peace here, temporarily. Huh? See, there are advantages to fighting. I submit to you. Wei Mang. Yes. And, and I apologize if, if it's too specific. Um, when I find myself in an argument and my manic jokes, my temper, my emotions are, uh, you know, happening, what, what instruction can you provide me to help me stop that? Has be specific. Is there's no such cure all for your manic disorder. You can only learn to deal with your manic side uh, with someone. Okay, against someone, uh, because your manic ghost reacts to the other manic ghosts or. Uh, or, or other reasons, okay? So it varies from person to person. So it's really no, no real, real cure-all, like uh, you take a pill and, and you're less manic. The only way for that to happen is that you basically become a robot, okay? Uh, which is no cure at all, which is no solution at all, okay? It's called poisoning yourself to me. Uh, so the fact that you even are admitting you have a manic side, that's very healthy already, okay? And so uh, in, in your particular case, uh, there is much more important for you to learn to recognize uh, the frequency of who you argue with uh, and then and learn how to solve that particular problem the, those types of problems with that particular person, and that's how you become less manic. And this is a problem with, with the academians, with the, uh, 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 with the, uh, the people who, who, who like to talk about theories and talk about principles. Mm. It doesn't quite work that way. Uh, in interpersonal relationships, it's always about uh, your ego, which, which is very unpredictable. Uh, so that's why it's, there's no, there is no, uh, there's no way to have a uh, general approach for, for, uh, for, for that particular kind of problem. Okay, so you wear your manic side, you wear that you lose your temper and uh, you get into arguing with others. Uh, and uh, uh, yes, uh, quite often, quite often you justify it, okay? It's, it's reasonable for you to get upset, okay? 
in, in those cases. Yeah. However, mm, we are cultivators. Okay? We should recognize that when we lose our temper and we get afflicted, uh, then we have room, we have uh, things to work on. We have a purpose now for our cultivation. Cultivation is only effective when you have a purpose. You don't just cultivate. My master teaches them to cultivate. I disagree with that. If the Chinese keep on talking about I cultivate, Vietnamese talk about I cultivate, I say cultivate what? It's a field, you cultivate rice, you cultivate uh, potatoes, right? You don't just cultivate. You cultivate for a purpose to me. And this is, I've, it always bothered me when I first started. You know, it, it sounded so wonderful. Chinese said, well, woman, uh, we, we, we cultivate. I say, yeah, but they are still so afflicted. And they made me lose respect for their cultivation. And this is what happens to the young kids nowadays, to the young people nowadays. They look at us who claim to cultivate and we're still afflicted like heck. We still blow our top at the kids for no real reason. And then we say we cultivate. And for the young people to look at us and say, that cultivation is useless to me. It's not going to help me at all, fix my problems. I feel that not just uh, Buddhism, but I feel that religion in general uh, nowadays has to be more effective at helping people resolve their afflictions. In Buddhism in particular, we have a lot of technology, a lot of techniques to help you resolve your afflictions, more so than in other religions, religions clearly. Okay? But, uh, but we, we need to learn to take advantage of it instead of using a blanket thing here where let's be harmonious, okay? Um, uh, and, and, and I really feel that it's a weakness to, be, to want to be harmonious because you're afraid of discord, you're afraid of disharmony, you're afraid of disagreements, you're afraid of fighting. Let me ask you, you don't fight, how are you going to get better at punching people? Seriously. Huh? When you go to martial arts, anyone want to go to, to practice martial arts? What do we need to do? We, sim we simulate fighting, don't we? In order to get better. And yet, you go to the temple and say, don't fight. Don't ever fight. To me, it, it's, uh, it's missing. There's uh, something missing here. And I blame it on Confucius because I, I adore Master Shenhua. I can never say, well, I do have some few things, bad things to say about him, like he's short. But in general, he's my idol. Okay. Uh, but it, it's uh, we, uh, we should be fearless. Why should we be afraid of fighting? And this is their weakness. They want harmony. They seek harmony. We don't because it's our creed. We don't seek. I take a little bit further his creed than his Chinese style. We don't seek. Not even fighting. I mean, avoid, you know, we don't seek harmony. What for? There's an attachment there. 
Why is the seek harmony? Fight. You want to go fight. You love her enough, you stop eventually. And your love grows stronger. Uh, wait, Mom. At what age did you uh, got get married? I was 30. 30, so 30 years later. Okay, 60. Okay, fine, fine. I'm, I'm just... You're very good, yeah. I'm impressed. <laughs> what? You better tell me that after we... Because you don't get everything you want. After that, that's it. After we have two children, I'm like, well, do I? Really? Okay. Oh, thank you, honey. So. So, so your point is that you've been fighting. Is there harmony in your in your marriage? So what are you doing about it? He has a problem. Is it inside? He admitted to you he has a problem. What are you doing about it? It's called self torture. Yeah, 
Very good. Excellent. See, Peter, um, uh, let me interject. Peter, you asked a question about your manic side and so forth and losing your temper and fighting and getting in trouble. Um, this lady has just told you, which is uh, this part of life is uh, you fight and you learn uh, from each time. There's no, there's really no, no, no other way. You, every time you fight, every time you, have, you get in trouble, you learn and become better, hopefully. And that is what we call cultivation, not repression. You too. I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> yes, there are ghosts, and the ghosts usually are behind your troubles, especially when you have mental issues, you are being manipulated by your ghosts, okay? Be it uh, manic, uh, ghosts, be it depression ghosts, be it uh, anxiety ghosts, be it uh, so forth. All those, all those are, are have uh, some yin beings, uh, ghosts or demons behind it. That's a general answer. Okay. And how can you tell? Uh, if you can't, then you can't. Okay. They have an edge over us, the ghosts. Uh, can see us, we can't see them. Okay, yeah, so don't be paranoid. Yeah. Whether you can, can tell or not, you still, uh, they still can manipulate you. Next. Way bound. Thank you, Master. Uh, I was listening to our discussion with my uh, partner, and uh, she was telling me that in the beginning when we were first together, I used to tell her uh, all the ways in which she was wrong, and it was overwhelming, and that uh, I was like constantly trying to critique her and judge her. And, she uh, was, and you believe her? Seriously, you believe her? You a smart guy, and you believe her. That does it by itself. Let me tell you, I already got the game, okay? But, um, <clears throat> but, uh, I was, she's like, you, you really reduced to that. And I was just like, oh, you know what happened? Is, uh, Master told me to do a bunch of things. And I actually want to do them. And I still can't. I'm like, and like, I, it, more than anything in the world, I would love to follow your direction to the T and just achieve everything I want to achieve. You know, I do know that's not the way to do it, right? But it, uh, and so when I'm thinking about fighting, you know, or, or you know, it's okay to fight, um, why should I presume that I have the wisdom to fight anything? And when I do fight, what position should I be fighting from? Good, good question. I don't know. I just want to be different with Master Shin Huang, that's all. <laughs> How is that for an answer? I don't know. Oh. Uh, first of all, and this is where you keep on struggling because you need to have a reason. You need to understand. So you try to rationalize everything. When you say, for example, that you cannot 
do what I tell you to do. Yeah. And you try to understand it, and you try to justify it. Uh, let me spell it out for you. Okay. Most of the time, people cannot do what I tell them to do. I ask them to do. It's supposed to be difficult. If, it's, if you can do it already, why should I tell you to do it? Have you thought about it? Huh? Why would I waste my time telling you to do something you can already do? How would that improve you? How, can, how would that help you improve as a person? It's only by trying to do something that you can, that's how you can improve as a human being. That's point number one. And point number two is that even though you can't do it, you keep at it until you can. And that is the purpose. You fail, but you will not give up. You keep at it. Why? Because others did not give up and they got great benefits. That's all you need to know. Look around you. The guy right in front of you, he failed repeatedly. He keeps on coming when he can. That's what it's about. And I can keep on elaborating and, and, and uh, in, uh, long enough for you to write a thesis paper for your master's degree in Buddhism, but I won't, because that's not why we're here. Okay, just do it, one thing at a time, and try your best. That's all you got. Okay, and try, don't try to understand too much. Because what happened, point number three, is that what you try, many of you, most of you try so much because you know, to understand, to rationalize, to reassure yourself it makes sense, and so forth, is exactly what we're trying to kill. So initially, the Hinayana people they teach you the Buddha taught those people because those people are like, are like him. They like to understand. So they, they taught, the Buddha taught uh, these people Hinayana principles, which are rational, which are intellectual, mm. which are reasonable. Okay? Uh, and uh, it's fine. Uh, but to me, it's too slow. So we skip that. I said, there are plenty of teachers out there, the Theravadan, the Theravadan teachers, the Hinayana teachers, the professors at uh, universities, they teach all of you that. I'm not going to waste time doing that. Okay? Uh, I'd rather uh, teach you the uh, faster way to become a better person by doing. Okay, anyone else? Okay, continuing. Uh, how many, okay, again, yeah. How many, God. I mean, again, sorry, uh, Korean, my beloved Korean disciples. I know you guys are into harmony and so forth. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm glad I'm not Korean. You too. Okay, that's enough for this round. We have a few more comments. Uh, number one, Bert Sayuki. Thank you for the lecture, Master, and sorry for disturbing the schedule two days ago. 
It wasn't my intention at all. Okay. You know what happened, CNC? When you guys dealing with were, were reacting to it, what did I do? Start to talk three times. Ten minutes later, the ghost is discouraged. Understand now? Thank you. Okay. Better luck next time. Next. I don't know. It's a result already, so, so look forward, don't look back. <laughs> Next. Okay, last one from Aqua Racer. Thanks, Master. If we run into trouble with ghosts, the quickest way is what we saw her say. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. When we get into I, when we go into when I start to talking about ghosts and demons and stuff like that, uh, I'm opening a can of worms. It will it's endless. Uh, you're gonna ask you know, things that I cannot tell you, and in the areas where you uh, are ill-equipped are to to deal with. Just just beware that. My purpose of talking like that is because uh, I feel that you should be aware of the yin world. There's something called ghosts, uh, called uh, demons, and so forth. Uh, just be aware of it, that's all. Uh, it's just part of our existence. We're sharing space with such beings. It's all so. Just because the scientists can't see it, they can't prove it, whatever, it doesn't mean they don't exist, that's all. Uh, in, in Buddhism, um, a lot of our work is actually uh, working on that side. We develop, develop skills and wisdom and knowledge in order to help keep those beings in check. Because we, if we didn't, uh, you wouldn't have a prayer or a chance at all. Hmm? Yeah, and so, for example, uh, the gentleman who made a comment uh, uh, previous to this one here, uh, he apologized for disturbing us. Uh, it's because he's being manipulated by a ghost. And that's what happens to us. Uh, it, during a Chan Chi, a lot of uh, disruption, disturbances come our way, and you, we just uh, need to learn to deal with it. That's all. Don't get afflicted. All my disciples were afflicted. They're trying to protect me. Okay? They think they're protecting me, yeah. but, uh, but that's, that's uh, it's just be aware of it. That's all that, that um, Sometimes uh, there's, there are things that are beyond your imagination, beyond your comprehension. Don't be so sure of yourself. You don't know it all. You don't know everything. Okay? So, doctors cannot cure all diseases. Mental doctors are mentally not well. <laughs> And same thing, the physicians are not well themselves. Yeah. Uh, that's how it is. Yeah. All right. Family is not harmony, the country won't be good, the country won't be good, okay? 
Such being the case, when the country is not good, a world war will start, a war against each other, okay, that's not a fight. Uh, you make a war here at the family level, a minor war, country level, a medium war, war level, and major wars, okay. No one wants that. Nah. We call them minor wars, but you know, this, this is theory, okay. Uh, it, We talk like this, the, the kids and, and the intellectual will, will, will have a field day with us, okay? Yeah. It's okay for him. I mean, this is okay for Master Shenhua because he speaks from a, from a position of wisdom, okay? But not us. Be careful. We learn these things. We listen to it. You understand. You put things in perspective. Don't just listen to this and go back and, 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 and uh, blindly follow, okay? Yeah. First, we must squall the minor wars. Medium wars will not happen. Major wars naturally will not occur. Yeah, right. And then another section where it says war is with the killing karmas. Okay? Yeah. So it varies. It depends. Uh, I don't know what he's up to right here, who is in the audience, but... Uh, major wars happen because of killing karmas, okay? Yeah. Has nothing do, to do with minor wars. Uh, you ought to know the moment the couple is arguing, it's like having a violent wind. I don't understand this, okay? <laughs> I don't, I fail to see the connection. Uh, this is why, it would be, but however, it doesn't mean I'm right. When he talks like this, actually, he, he is so erudite. He actually sees that the stars line up a certain way, in a weird way, that's why this wind and <laughs> so forth. Trust me, everything he says is, has a basis, okay? Yeah. I wish that someone then said, well, ask, you know, uh, could you elaborate a little bit? What is the basis of having a violent, uh, violent wind here? Is there some stars are lining up wrong or something? Where can we, can we find that information somewhere? Okay, it would be so cool. But we don't have the blessing to, to be able to ask him so that we could learn. If a person loses temper, have a wind, have a storm, okay, uh, uh, Quang Feng Bao Yu here, it's, uh, it's a heavy rain, okay? It's violent rain, it's not storm. Storm has wind and all the stuff. Uh, this, uh, 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 this, it's, um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a heavy rain or violent rain, okay? Uh, but anyway, yeah. Minor issue. This violent wind and a heavy storm when uh, we blow down trees, ruin houses, and kill people, okay? Destruction, okay? Uh, aren't you like a drizzle? Light rain is okay? Uh, again, I have a problem with this. It's again suppression and repression. Why can't you be yourself? in big quarrels, mm. minor ones are okay, yeah. so I don't want to hear it, and, and this is a problem I have with all these Chinese people and these Vietnamese people and these people who are, who are this Mexican here, Mexican C. Excuse me, it sounds like invasion of privacy. It's the private things. Why do you have to see? Why do you have to hear? Let them argue. Let you know, <laughs> you know, it's in their own homes. Why do you have to see? Let them be. And this is a problem because of this. His disciples, they constantly, they hide behind the four walls, but they are looking everywhere but at themselves. <laughs> 
Hmm? Fundamentally, this is a problem with this type of instruction. It leaves gaping holes. Because when you do that, you know, Master says, now these, you know, you, you tend to feel that now I want to be like Master, I want to see, but he argues with his wife or not. How often does it happen? You know? We know that they argue a lot. You can tell right away. But <laughs> let's go to their homes and, and verify it. Huh? You know what I mean? It's an invasion of privacy here in the U.S. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a not okay. It's not cool. Why does Master have to know that you argue? Master is too busy. <laughs> Master sure has, you know, he has a lot of help, actually. Uh, he has a lot of transformations. Uh, anyway, so my concern is that it gives his disciples the wrong impression. It's okay to look at people's and look at people, people's private affairs. That's so wrong. I have a few encounters with such a, his disciples and other people disciples. I know they're stuck because that's what they do. Okay, they keep on looking at others at other people's faults. Okay, when it's none of their business. It's it's, it's fundamentally a violation of cultivation to me. Mm -hmm. One side will tell you, look at your own faults. And then when now Master says, but I look at yours. And therefore, you know, and therefore, many of these uh, such uh, disciples, uh, that's what they do too, to their detriment. I can hear you argue, okay. Uh, you shouldn't argue, should not lose your temper, okay, fine. Uh, needs to be kneeled in front of the Buddha for three days, all right. Yeah. You will be punished, don't listen, that's committing a crime on top of a crime, okay. The, 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 uh, the point here is that uh, arguing is not a good thing, okay? Uh, uh, but, but when the master says, don't argue and you argue, that's, that's, uh, it really is a crime on top of a crime. The crime is arguing, and the other, the other is that you disobey the master. It's a much worse problem for you. You try to be a good disciple, don't give much trouble. Oh, okay. <laughs> but that's what they do. Yeah. The reason people come to the temple because they, uh, they have problems. Okay. They need to resolve. And how can you not, how can you not give master trouble if, 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 uh, if you try to resolve your problems? Anyway, uh, this is for kindergarten, let me tell you. Uh, don't be a mischievous child or a naughty child. Let them be. <laughs> let them break statues, let them break things. Who cares? We buy them again eventually. If we are we're so attached to it, then, then, then we shouldn't buy statues. We shouldn't buy things that break. <sighs> uh, don't be a naughty child. Be the naughty child. Be yourself. If you too, if you are out of control, I'll slap your face. I will be naughtier than you. When I'm pissed off to the point I have nothing to say. Uh, I get pissed off, I get violent, okay? <laughs> uh, 14G, are we there yet?
Ah, ok. Continue. Actually, we cover a lot of slides tonight. You want to stop? Are you tired? I am tired because I argue so much with my master, and I worry that you know I'm going, I'm he, I'm going to be punished with him because I'm not being harmonious with him. He says, "Oh, he says, you'll be punished if you argue." I'm arguing with him. That's the worst kind of crime. A crime on top of a crime. Yes. Thank you, Master. I have a question to ask regarding um, my children. Yesterday, when I get home from the temple, my daughter and my son was fighting. Um, my daughter say, I can't believe it. Maria, after Salat cook food for me, and then uh, he keep on poking his fork on my steak. And then my son, t and then she keep on rambling about it. And then he walk away, he walk upstairs. She chased after him, and she keep on charging again him, and he warned her, he say, do not touch me, do not fight with me, or else I will re retaliate. And she keep on pushing again him, and he say, two more time, I'm gonna retaliate. And then she still does that, and then he kick her really hard on her stomach, and then she crawled down and cried. But right after that, he um, he feel bad and he said, "Mom, did she um, to, did she flex her muscle, her ab muscle before I kick her?" I say, "How can she respond that fast when you uh, react after her?" But I say, I gave him advice. I say, next time when your sister do like this and you know you can't handle her, then just walk away. And then if you walk away, she continue chasing after you. Then you just chant um, Amita for or something. Uh, do not respond with violence or argue back with her because you can't win in this situation. It's not your sister. Is my advice the right thing to say to uh, to advise for him, Master? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, she would do like that a few times a day, and uh, a few said, times a day. Yeah. Only. Yeah. <laughs> He said, I can't take it no more, Mom. I, what should I do? I, I, yeah. I don't know. And again, I'm, I, I, I'm, I know I'm wrong, okay? Because uh, uh, I have, I couldn't quite figure out why the girls do that to men. You know, it's like you, you keep them pushing and pushing and pushing. It's like a, like a, like a mental torture, you know? She does that too. Yeah, yes. you, you, like you tighten the screws until... <laughs> and the man, the man has to go crazy. And there's just some real perverse pleasure from but girls. I, I don't get it. I have a... Anyone has that ex ex experience with me? D. Admit it. Your own daughter. Yellow. She does that to me a lot, but uh, I learned not to get get mad. So uh, over the years, I, I not had, you know, I get used to it, but uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't let that affect me as much. Uh, okay. First of all, okay, such behavior is a manic behavior. She's manic. I'm sorry. Okay, uh, it's your children, but I. Uh, the parents used to get so upset. He said, "How dare you call my son bipolar and tell the whole world my son's bipolar? What kind of monk are you?" I did say your sister is bipolar. Watch and see. And then right after, he kicked her in the stomach, and then um, he got uh, concerned, and then he started to say, now I'm very regret with my actions. So he started running around looking for ice to cool her stomach down or warm compression. And then after that, she become extremely nice to him. Like she go into her, she went into her room and got everything she could and say, here, brother, this is for you. This is for you. 
like so I right before that I told him I say she's bipolar so <laughs> that's, that's on the one side she's very mad and later on she I didn't say later on she be nine but then, then she be calm down but her voice is so different so I told him about it and my I, I advise him just when thing happen just walk away and chant mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's, that's all I can he's do he's learning he's learning there because uh, in two ways number one is learning about the behavior of bipolar people they will do they will aggravate you so that you harm them, you hurt them. That's typical. Mm -hmm. And uh, number two, um, better brace it because his wife's going to be like that too. Mm -hmm. Guaranteed. <laughs> we train him how to deal with it right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's getting much. free training. <laughs> so he should be nice to her and not the other way around. It's typical, and the kids will learn from interacting with each other, and it's, it's okay. And, and they, they're so blessed that you have an explanation for them. Uh, Thank you, Master. Because there's no really rational way to explain this at all. Uh, May I say one thing? I say thanks to you because uh, you have explained that to me. So when thing happened, I told him that the the key thing is the more you react, your sister gonna get um, will feel the pain because it will push you to the point where you get so afflicted that you will do harm to your sister. And when your sister hurt herself, that's when it's get out of her. And that's when 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 it's a, oh I have done my. I got my score for today of harming her. So I told him just think of that point that the more you react, the more your sister will get hurt. So just maintain your calm. So the dad did the same thing, right? The dad didn't react to it, right? He just, he just brushed it off. Yes? A lot of times she would like provoke me, try to get me to argue with her. Mm -hmm. You know, but it was, I, I learned that if I just, she sometimes she doesn't think logically, so you can use not you cannot use logic to reason with her, right? So a lot of time I just like uh, agree with her, or or uh, I try to make some kind of comment that redirect the conversation to uh, something to something more positive. So that that, that would help. They're asking for trouble, that's all. And you have two ways to deal with it. Give them trouble, which is the fastest way. Just slap them. Not her, slap the ghost. But you can't, can you? <laughs> Meditate, someday you can. Master, what our family did was uh, at night, my son and I and my daughter, we all go to the altar and we sit and then we, we cross our leg and then we chant Dajito mm. 50, 54 times, depend on their wish. I say whatever amount you want, and we sit together and do it. Mm. I remember the first few times we did it, she got very frustrated and she would interrupt and giggle and fight and all the stuff. But uh, lately, she would just sit and chant together with us. Because it feels good. Yeah. Mm. Another way is to. Uh, if you can't slap them, then, then uh, turn on the uh, recording of uh, Great Compassion Mantra. It calms them down. That's, that's what my daughter does every day. She, if she does, she knew. Because right now she told me that I believe mom. I said, what do you believe? And she said that um, I know that whenever I chant Great Compassion Mantra, she chants about 30 times, sometimes 40 times per day. And whenever she does that, then her day is very calm. But mm -hmm. if she wait until the end of the day to do it, then throughout the day there will be some episode. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very good. A few more minutes. Yeah.
那个十四个禅期，现在已经五个禅期过去。那么，这个长期里边，有的时候人多，有的时候人少。Of the fourteen Chan Chis, five Chis have already passed. During the Qi, sometimes there are more people, sometimes there are less people. But, 人多人少的问题。The cultivation is you yourself cultivating yourself. It's not a matter of more or less people. 你就一个人，也一样休息。一百个人，一千个人，一万个人，也是一样修行。If you're the only one, you cultivate the same. A hundred people, a thousand people, ten thousand people, you cultivate the same. 你修行要。少，人少也不知道少，人多也不知道多。If you cultivate well, when there are less people, you won't know there are less. When there are more people, you also won't know there are more. 因为。根本就没有一个多少的问题。Because basically there's no such a concept as more or less. 多是从少而称多，少。是从多而言少，那多少根本就不成问题。Many came from few, and few became many. Few became many, and many is relative to few. Many or few is nothing to be concerned with at all. 不过修行是要认真去修行，要脚扎实地，实实在在的，一步一步向前去修行。However, while cultivating, one needs to do so earnestly, having your feet planted firmly on the ground, cultivate for real. Don't just talk about it. Progress and move forward one step at a time. So, you have to cultivate yourself. So, cultivation is you yourself cultivating yourself. Regardless if there are many, if there are more or less people. People are also like this. 
When there are more people, you apply effort the same. When there are less people, you apply effort the same as well. Okay, stop here. Okay, yeah, that's almost the end of what he's trying to say here. Okay, two more slides and we stop. If you're able to reach the point where many yet is not many, few yet is not few. When there's many, you're not aware it's many. When there's few, you're not aware it's few. Very good. We stop here. Okay, one more. That's the end of this point. At this time, we can say your Kung Fu has improved a bit. Okay, so where were we? He's talking about more and less. He says, he says, uh, 112, he says that uh, sometimes there are more people, sometimes there are fewer people. Oh. And uh, because basically, who has the time to do 100 days of chant? We all have to make a living, okay? Uh, uh, cultivation, cultivating itself is not a matter of more or less people. So pay no attention to it. Uh, you are, oh, if you are the only one, you cultivate the same. 100 people, 1,000 people, you cultivate the same. Cultivate well, there's less people, you don't get less, they're still the same people, and you don't know. So you keep on harping about this less and more, more or less, uh, uh, no, 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 no more, no less. All it's just mental concepts. Okay, basically, more is just a mental concept. Less is a mental concept. Forget it. It doesn't matter. Okay, ignore that. Ignore those uh, those thoughts. Mm. Simple. Mm. So you ignore those thoughts. A few people today forget it. Lots of people today forget it, okay? It's ignored. One needs to do it earnestly when you cultivate, okay? Ren Chen, Ren Chen, okay, you need to be earnestly, okay? Uh, you need to appreciate how precious it is to be able to cultivate at his way places. Very, very rare, okay? Mm -hmm. I explained it two nights ago that in his way places, when he was alive for him, you know, you are, you are laying the groundwork for tremendous, big accomplishment, humongous accomplishments. You know? It's priceless, so you should, have, should really appreciate it, okay? So the Renchen here is, is um, to me, is more, more appreciative of the opportunity uh, that uh, he did for us. Uh, uh, so um, you have to uh, Uh, to, it's difficult. I don't know how to explain this Chinese expression. Chinese people help us out. He keeps on mention, bringing this up. What does it mean? Are uh, Chinese people awake yet? <laughs> She's doing translation. Ah, cool. Okay, so somebody is awake. So what does it mean in Chinese? What is, what, is, what is it referring to? Mm -hmm. 
he keeps on mentioning this, and I haven't got a good answer yet how to elaborate on this. So, yeah, this is definitely a very common phrase we hear in this all the time. Um, so it's kind of like uh, one step at a time, you, you make concrete, one step at a time, hard work, and then don't worry about... Shi Don't. What does it mean? Shi di is... You, you, it's a formally, right, like firm ground. So you don't just like skipping over, right? You actually <laughs> press, you walk one step and then walk kind of with that. And instead of like uh, just jumping over, like, so there's mm. that concept mm. of you. Mm. Once every step is very firm, very solid, right? And then you step after step and then focus on that concrete next step and then don't don't kind of you know being very friv frivolous don't um don't yeah don't talk about like you know bigger words and, and just just focus on making uh, each step count make the effort Yes. Yeah, it's like fasting. Walk one day the walk. is like a one step. Yeah, walk yeah. the walk, make the yeah. effort. Don't cut corners. Don't cut corners. Very good. Okay. Uh, okay, that's what it means. Very good. Wei Thank you, Master. So if I say back to you what I just heard, in Chinese people say be awake, what they mean is don't cut corners. Be awake? What? The translation says, uh, um, huh? It's the having your feet planted firmly on the ground. We're talking about that part. So that's a literal translation, right? Yeah. Plant your feet firmly on the ground. Uh, so walk uh, firmly. Walk the walk is our English expression. Yes, walk the walk. Yeah, that's what it means. And then she said, So it's the same concept. So you, you, uh, um, not call to fit for real, but actually one step at a time. Okay? Uh, when you walk a walk, it's one step at a time. You actually are moving forward one step at a time. Don't, don't uh, try to cut corners. Right? Okay, very good. Uh, COVID in regard is more or less people. It keeps on talking to more or less people. Uh, you fire the same effort. Uh, point one is not mm, yet a few in the same as yes. Uh, a few is many, many, few. Uh, you're not aware of many, uh, few, or few. And that and you have a little kung fu, meaning that you naturally uh, are not afflicted. You don't, you stop looking outside. You walk the walk. You keep at it. Okay? Mm. Ignore. Uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, yes? Green? Uh, can I ask this a question that's a different topic? Sure. Uh, so, uh, just on the topic of seeing other people's fault, faults, um, I just found it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's really difficult. Like, I, I'm doing, like, I'm seeing other people's sports all day. And, and uh, is it okay to start with seeing other people's sports and then, but just not 
getting afflicted or us afflicted? It's quite often misunderstood not seeing other people's faults. How can we not see other people's faults? There's so many faults to be seen everywhere. And the more you cultivate, the more wisdom you have, the more faults you see. So how can you not see people's faults? This is what's beautiful about the instructions. It sounds like it's contradictory. It sounds impossible. But all it means is that, and it's so Chinese as well, and all it means is that when you see other people's faults, what do you do? You criticize them. You judge them. Yes? Hmm. So when you cultivate, in a context of cultivation, when you see people's faults, you don't get afflicted. You don't judge them. That's all. Of course you see. You don't see people's faults. But you see them, and yet, as if you're not seeing. If you see people's faults, and you act upon them, you criticize them, you slander them, uh, and so forth, and then you're not cultivating at all. And actually, your cultivation will peak if you do that. And that's what these people don't realize. As some people come to my temple and try to uh, learn the skills and develop spiritual powers. I'm warning you you will naturally open your eyes and then you start seeing more and more and more. You improve and you see more uh, you, people's faults a lot faster. And uh, uh, unless you have the proper foundation, you're going to uh, spiral out of uh, orbit. Yeah. So, so that's why this, uh, this reminder is important. When you see people's faults, uh, embrace them. Ignore them. Don't judge them. That's all. Uh, when you cultivate. However, at work, of course, when you see people's fault, you're supposed to do something about it. Okay? But that's different. Different environment. Okay? And when, the Master says, when you see people's faults, and you are not afflicted, and that's when you improved. Okay, so let me go back to, we just discussed earlier about fighting on your wife. You, can you see the faults? Her faults? Hmm? And that's what you're fighting? With you right and she's wrong? Let's face it. And you fight and fight and fight. Because you insist on being right. And this is where I feel that they're missing out. The Chinese are missing out and the Koreans are missing out and the, and the, and the, uh, and the, and the Japanese are missing out. Only the Vietnamese got it. We fight. We fight to death. See, either we kill someone or we decide to Surrender, <laughs> out of love, <laughs> you know? And that's when you let go of the affliction, let go of the attachment. That's why I submit to you, our Vietnamese style is a lot faster than Chinese or Japanese or Korean. Because you're not afraid of it, okay? No need to repress, no need to pretend, okay? And be true to ourselves. Let's be real. Okay? Let's cultivate for real. Let them have it. <laughs> now <they> apologize. <laughs> yellow. Oh, I'm yeah, from a yellow face <laughs> person. 
I'm not sure that I'm still a Vietnamese or not, because I also learned from Master that uh, we need to yield. Uh, we uh, discuss, we argue, but uh, I'm on, always, uh, most of the time, I'm the one who yield. And, and I don't think uh, I have uh, any afflicted uh, as I used to be, because I understand the person, or I, I can see the beyond the argument from, from other side. So I yield, and then I feel very normal, no uh, false talk. How can you yield? That's a good point. How can you yield? And he's not Vietnamese, so you know that's not even bother uh, talking to him. But he, he, you know, he's he's no longer has a, the uh, the advantage over the other cultivators. Okay, uh, but how can we yield? Hmm? Green. How can you have harmony? That's how you have a fight. Taking a loss. Taking a loss, okay. Yes. Wei Mang. But it's, uh, you tell people they're taking a loss, they're, it's a hard pill to swallow. It's too Chinese. Wei Mang. Taking a loss, okay. Uh, a pale face, can you believe it? This guy is, cannot be. Real. <laughs> okay. okay, anyone else? Huh? It's very simple. I don't know why the, the scientists haven't figured it out yet. We might. No. <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> Wei Mang. I abuse him because you know, I should like to slap him every now and then. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the first thing I said was, Mr. Mother, you're a pitch It sounds like she's suffering so much. <laughs> the poor girl. <laughs> the middle way. Okay, getting close. Yes, green. Quickly, quickly. I I think just from from that conversation, I feel she just kind of gives up and then let it go. There's nothing to. She can do it's like that's kind of another way to <laughs> to yield. So, yeah, to I gave up. He's white. <laughs> what can, can you do? Wei <laughs> Mao, uh, she's racist. You know that. Wei <laughs> Mao. I was about to say, um, you stop what you're doing. Go take a cold shower. <laughs> Did you get laid up? I heard that uh, your boss just laid up 100,000, 10,000 people. <laughs> Did he give you a pink slip? Oh, he's still employed because he gave a business $100. <laughs> uh, I see that's a wisdom right there. <laughs> uh, very good. Um, what was my question again? <laughs> the world has so many problems. Eh? How do you yield? Yeah. How do you make it easy for yourself to yield? How do you get your children not to beat up on the sister? Hmm? Not to strangle her. Okay. Uh, uh, what we do is, is we have many arms so that we strangle and then she can go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sifu. Um, the way I tell my son is out oh, compassion. Compassion, okay. Uh, and, and then uh, so Buddhist. <laughs> and then for my husband, the way he yield for me is uh, 
let's say I spend a lot of money up to for like one time 15 or 10K, and then he will say, uh, it's not worth it to fight over this, to make her more suffer, so he yield for me. That's how it is. He has wisdom. We hate to admit it. <laughs> we cultivate and we don't even have that kind of wisdom. Anyone else? How do you get the yield? It's very easy. It's so easy. You smart people, you haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> huh? you, you th you're so proud of you say, I'm smart. I, there's no problem I haven't figured it out yet. I made, you know, I'm so successful. Yes? How sit, do you yield? Sit longer. Sit longer, okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, good bad Thai. Um, có ba điều đỡ mình nhường. Thứ nhất á, là mình nhường là không có cái trouble giữa giữa, giữa người và mình. Thứ nhì nữa á, mình nhường là vì mình thương họ mình nhường. Hmm? Thứ ba thứ ba nữa là mình nhường vì vì cái nhường đó là một cái một cái sự trí tuệ. Very good. Quý mong. Oh, translation. <laughs> I'm running out of time. I have to go to bed. Come on, guys. <laughs> don't, don't drag it out. <laughs> you guys are making, so, making it so difficult for me to stop because you keep on challenging me. Uh, Wei Mang. Translation. Go ahead. Translation. Change the paradigm. That's all. Change, change the paradigm. Make it bigger. Make them look like a bigger issue. Huh? Instead of because they're fighting, maybe they're fighting over like a piece of bread. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's uh, you all have to do is look at the bigger, bigger picture. You're fighting over small things. It's not worth it. You're better than that. That's all, that's all you're saying. You know, just change your paradigm, that's all. And this guy says, you know, uh, so I lost the money already, so what's the point of <laughs> making it worse? Okay? And that's the, same, that's the same kind of paradigm, right? I mean, the same kind of approach. Change your paradigm. If you only look at, you know, $10,000, $15,000, that's nothing. Let's look at our combined fortune together. It's pretty small. <laughs> Or what we can make even more. Or we put her to work. Ask her to put you know, work over time. You know, so, there's so many ways to deal with the problem. Just change your paradigm. That's all. Refuse to fight. And in order to get the other person to go along with you, help the person see different perspective. That's all. Make a bigger problem, smaller problem, different problem, you know and so forth. Whatever it takes, change the paradigm. And you can try something new each time. That's part of the fun. Does it make sense? You all understand it, but you, 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 you cannot see the common thread is this change your perspective. Make it a bigger issue. Or make it not a non-issue. Or make it a tiny issue, because to to you know to uh, to her son, uh, it's a big issue. Okay. That's why he had to act upon it. It could be as simple as uh, recite uh, the Buddha's name, so your mind switches from dwelling on the problem, your affliction, your anger, and switch to someone called Wanyin Bodhisattva, Amitama Buddha, and so forth. Just change your paradigm, that's all. 
stop dwelling on it. And if you are at work, uh, you, you, you use the opportunity to motivate them for a broader perspective, more challenging perspective, more rewarding perspective here. Okay, so for example, I don't know, you noticed a while ago, there's some kind of heavy breathing in the back of the Buddha hall. No one noticed? And someone moaning? <laughs> typically, the people say, why is he making noise? How did he come? He's not even uh, Vietnamese. Uh, <laughs> and he's making noises, uh, and so forth. Yeah. Change the paradigm. That's all. Okay? He's doing it because he's both manic, depressive. They both are attacking him at the same time. That's why it's unbearable to him. He's so unbearable to him because his depression goes attack. It's the pain is not that bad, but to him it's like it's the end of the world. Okay? And then it, ah, it's because the mighty ghost is he does it so that we throw him out. You know that? And you guess what? Passed the test. Look at that. Isn't it beautiful? We rise above it. Change the paradigm. Don't look at, you know, the bad side. Look at, you know. If you understand the right reasons why we do all these things, it's for the greater good for everyone. Yeah, wonderful for the kids, for him, for the ghost as well. Because now the ghost knows that we know, but we're not beating them up. You think about that. Hmm? See? See? The, wor the world is so, life is so, can I say, wonderful? Because there's so many aspects you are you coming from that perspective, okay? You keep growing and growing and find it so wonderful. You're learning more and more and being more embracing, more compassionate. Okay? Thank you, everyone. And good evening. <laughs> You change the paradigm, your paradigm, and you help them change their paradigm. That's the best way to deal with it. Okay? That's all. <laughs>